tell me when you think the water level gets to the probe. Because this bad boy should be feeding water in. I mean, honestly, one of these days, please. While I have this open really fast before we go to the probe, I just wanna show you why it is deceiving. Yeah, water's running out pretty good, right? Oh my God. Thank God for the low water cutoff probe. Ugh. Now that we got this disaster all taken care of, I wanna come over and address the probe. So in order to do that, we're gonna take our electric meter and and instead of using the regular prongs on our multimeter, I forgot Field Piece gives you alligator clips with it. We're gonna put one alligator clamp on the end where our wing nut for our low water cutoff control would connect to. And then the other, we're gonna connect it really anywhere on the metal. You know, one of the screws works. If you get it on the brass, that's fine too. And then we come over to our meter, we switch it to our ohms resistance reading. We wanna switch it to volts. Now, I'm gonna open the manual feed. You tell me when you think the water level gets to the probe. How about now, huh? And to check it, glass open and water just started filling in. And that's basically what these devices do. They send a current through the center of the probe to the end where it's the metal tip. And then you have that insulated layer, that little white layer on the probe. And then the voltage, because water conducts electricity, the voltage will travel through all the little like things in the water, touch the metal of the boiler, and since our probe, our brass metal probe is touching the boiler, the current can travel through. Our control then picks up that signal and registers it as we have water. When the water level drops and you no longer have that continuity between the end of the probe and the boiler, we read that as there is no water. But here's where the problems can come in. I had one of these earlier. I didn't film it, but I'm gonna show you the probe and I want you to look at it and tell me where you think the problem lies. Yeah, other than the fact that it's sitting in a cast iron well, which is a big no-no, um, what can happen is over time, you know, Minerals and stuff can build up on the probe and that, you know, if it's wet, can still create a path for the tip of the probe to touch the ground, which the boiler thinks there's water because of all that buildup, but there's not. That is why you will see me meticulously go through on every single tune-up, making sure the probe is clean, if it looks bad, replacing it. Here, come here, come over inside my bin and I'll show you all the probes I've pulled out so far. It should be checked yearly. It's not that difficult. A lot of times I've seen Teflon tape put on the threads to help put the probe in. That can actually act as a insulative layer. So we always wanna make sure we use Megalock or any kind of pipe compound to secure the probe. It does not need Teflon. Even though this is saying we're good, I'm still going to pull it, I'm still going to check it. If it's got any kind of buildup on it, I'm going to clean it off. What do you know? We're going to put a new one on. See that? This tiny little piece of plastic, that's it. That's the cleaning tip. It's not the most advanced thing in the world, all right? But it does its job. And as for the old probe, well, guess we got another one for the scrap bucket. <laughs> 